Okay, hello guys. I hope you're all having a great day. My name's Rob, and these are the main things that I use whilst on NMT to make the process as bearable as possible. It's hard enough as it is already. I'm sure you all know if you've tried it or if not. I hope these tips that I give you are helpful enough. <laughs> Just before I start, I'll leave any relevant links to what the protocol actually is in the description. That should help you if you haven't heard of it before and if you haven't heard of NMT before I'd suggest go looking at that now it'll make all of this make much more sense and NMT really did help me speed up the healing process I'm still healing now however from what I was when I first started recovering from topical steroid withdrawal or TSW the difference is crazy absolutely crazy um, doing this protocol so I'd highly suggest it and yeah these are the main things that I used okay so tip number one is using ice cubes now this is something I haven't seen anyone talk about before but this is a massive massive help for me one of the biggest issues I had whilst going through NMT particularly around exercise is dry mouth obviously you're restricting your water so you're gonna have all the other effects anyway but this was the one of the harder ones I find, particularly through the night and exercises, you get a really dry mouth, which is really irritating. So a good way to kind of counteract this, I find, is using ice cubes. So obviously pop it out of your freezer and it helps massively. They're probably around 20, 20 mils per, per ice cube, depending on the size, and it just helps partition your water for the end of the day when after having a meal or you're feeling a bit more thirsty you can save that water for later on in the day whether it be in food or a drink tip number two this isn't one i haven't personally used but i know some people have used this and it's really helped is not eating histamine foods or histamine releasing foods i'll put a link in the description or a picture on the screen of what those foods are some of them can be spinach tea i think tomatoes are another one from what i know again these are a big issue for me however if you have hay fever or issues with histamine that can if you basically take out these foods you may see a massive massive change in how much you itch whether that be through the night i know 10 till 2 is quite a it's when cortisol levels i, I believe kind of scale up and down reducing histamines can massively help a lot of you might take antihistamines already but reducing these foods may really help the itch which is again exercise through the night massive massive issue as i'm sure you all know the itch can be unbearable whilst going this process um, and this is another one that can really help uh, shower frequency this is one that is pretty grim when you're first starting out because you're only supposed to shower every four days just to make sure infection uh, doesn't set in if you've got open wounds i actually Oh, it's disgusting, I know. Um, I shower once a week just because it helps with your skin formation as it's rebuilding itself. It really helps speed up the, the process, I find. Of, of course, you know, flannel wash so you're not smelly, disgusting if you're going to work because that's just not very nice for anyone. But this is a big one. And the temperature. I have had only cold showers now, completely cold. Don't let myself get into it warm for about... A year and a half now and that is massive it just prevents you washing all of the oils off your skin which you probably don't have already because your skin's very dry and this is a massive one a skin specialist who of course didn't believe in tsw but did say that this was a massive massive thing to do if you do have skin issues is to reduce your shower frequency it just helps speed up the healing process the next one is another one about diet and that's a high protein high fat diet High protein, fairly straightforward, just helps your body get all of the essential nutrients it needs in order to rebuild the skin and stay healthy. And then the high fat is one that I never really used at all until recently because I find that on NMT with the water restriction, it's not just a drink it really restricts, it's your food because you're taking the water that you're eating your food into the limit. Now, eating high fat, naturally fat as a macronutrient has higher calories per gram. So that way you can get more calories in. You won't, you know, you'll feel like you'll have more energy than 
trying to eat high carb because carbs, if you think of the amount of carbs, you get potatoes, a big one, a lot of water in them, around 80%. And if you're having lots of them, you can't really partition your water to the end of the day. That's one I found. High protein, high fat. You have more water to drink through the day and you just feel less restricted, I find personally, and less hungry. Coming on to another one about diet is don't be too restrictive. Being too restrictive really in the long term isn't good because as you kind of go on, if you be too restrictive, this is something I've done personally, I've gone through NMT about three times now because I go too restrictive and I really can't stay in for it in the long run. I get to about three weeks, a month, and then because I've been too restrictive, I just binge eat, drink loads of water, sugar, whatever it may be. I just completely go off and then my skin's not as bad as it was in the beginning, but I just completely hinder my healing process, which I wish I never did. And I'm restarting again now, but it's getting a lot better, so it's all good. But that's a big thing. And a lot of people go too low on the water restriction on NMT, I've found. And recently, the person that made it, Dr. Kenji Sato, I believe I pronounced that right. I apologise if I don't. I'll try and find a picture now and I'll put it up here. Is you actually don't need to go as low as what people believe is. I mean, for reference, I'm on 1,800 milliliters, including food. I'm about 5'11". That's a lie, I'm 5'10 and a half. But you guys don't know, that's what it's all right. Well, now you do. Never mind. Um, and 170 pounds. So just for reference, that's how much I'm on. And oh, so much easier. So much easier from when I first did NMT and I was on 1,300 and I just felt like I was killing myself and it just wasn't sustainable long term. Next one, this is coming to clothes and what you wear, loose cotton. A lot of you probably do this already, but a big thing, if you wear wearing other clothes, you find you really irritate your skin, rubs off, any kind of progress you're making, just not very comfortable and loose, loose clothing. If you're wearing a lot of tight clothing, may irritate your skin quite a lot. Again, I'm sure you already know this, but if you haven't, this can just be an extra thing you can help on your journey to fully healing, which is what we're all after at the end of the day. Um, light bed duvets. Now, this is one that I only implemented in my second time through, I believe. But I would go to bed, I did the first one in winter, and I would, as you are, you're in your bed, you enjoy your warmth, that's your comfort, isn't it? However, that is actually classed as a moisturiser, heavy, heavy duvets. So what I do now is to get a lighter one, it's still get warm enough, thankfully I don't actually, I've kind of got used to the cold now, going through all this, but yeah, light duvets, massive help, just help speed it up, because if you're moisturising or you've got more moisture whilst going through this, it'll just overall delay the process, and yes, it's hard, it's uncomfortable if you live in a cold country like me, freezing your ass off in England, then you'll um, you'll understand this pain however if you're in a hot country you should be okay um you'll have a different set of issues i'm sure of it when it comes to the sun however this one is mainly for people in those colder countries like the beautiful england <laughs> a final one and this is taking photos now this is a massive massive one i find for motivation particularly if you start off you take a photo from when you were at the beginning. I can put some on screen now of how I started. And you take them every couple of days, you know, three, four days, I find. Some people like to do them every day. I find that a bit too much. So every week or so, I usually do. And I'll just track, I'll look and see how I'm doing. And at the beginning, it does look quite a lot worse with the flaking. If you just started using, not using moisturiser, sorry. It can look quite grim. You might have a lot more open wounds and scabbing. However, once you get past that stage and those scabs that have formed start to fall off, the new skin underneath comes through and looks so much cleaner, so much nicer. If you've got it really bad, and yes, you'll still get those open wounds again, but as you scratch and you, you air dry it, you continue, you rinse and repeat the process, you find it gets a lot stronger, your skin gets stronger and stronger and stronger, less inflamed, and as time goes on, you really find you really see how the process works, it's quite incredible to watch, and tracking the photos, you can really see how far you've come, and I guess another one is this, is in, whether it be the Facebook group chat, or you're on Instagram, you follow people who 
put their progress out. That's a massive help as well, looking at other people's photos, just to know that, A, you're not the only one, and two, there is an end point, there is light at the end of the tunnel, you can heal. It might take like a long time, it's been around two years for me now, but I do believe I'm getting there. Anyway, thank you for watching this. I hope it helped, as other videos I've seen have helped massively. I actually post progress photos on my Instagram page. I'll leave that in as a link in the description. Let me know if there's anything else you would like me to cover. I've got a wealth of experience, <laughs> as you can uh, probably imagine. Thankfully, I didn't get it as bad. My withdrawal process is a lot of people, which I'm very grateful for. I never got it on my face, which I would find quite unbearable. And I really feel for you guys that have got it on your face. However, any comments you leave down below, I will answer. I'll get around to them as quickly as possible. It's been emotional and thank you.